So look, I'm just going to come right out and say it. I am fired up to deliver my first ever TED Talk. I hope this is one of many that I'm able to deliver in my career. And I believe what I'm going to talk to you about today is absolutely an idea worth spreading. Quick question, how many people in the audience hunt? All right, a little light on the hunters. And how many people, and it's important we're real, how many people find hunting more or less repulsive? Oh, okay. <laughs> so look, it's normal to feel that way. A lot of people feel that way when they think about hunting, right? You think of hunting as crazy rednecks that wear camouflage, run into the woods and get drunk and take loaded weapons and endanger each other and others, or perhaps just as Bambi killers, right? It's normal. So today, I'm gonna to come from a little different perspective on hunting. And today, we're gonna to take a look at some of what I would consider to be the greatest hunters that have ever lived. Mother Teresa. You see, Mother Teresa hunted down social injustice and social inequality amongst the world's most afflicted. Oprah Winfrey. Oprah hunted down unthinkable success she did this in a male-dominated television industry. She empowered millions along the way. And today, Oprah hunts for better education in Africa. Mark Zuckerberg. Zuck continues to hunt to connect the world's six billion people across his social network we all know as Facebook. So you see, it turns out that we are all hunters. Every person in here is a hunter. The question is, what are the targets that you're after? What means the most to you in the hunt of your lives, right? We hunt for growth for our communities. We hunt for growth for our families. We hunt for self-development growth. Maybe you're hunting a new car. Perhaps you're hunting an intimate relationship, maybe a business deal. Whatever it is that's important to you, the key is to find our inner hunter and go and hunt down the targets that mean the most. So listen, I have always been a bow hunter. And so being a bow hunter, you spend a lot of time on the tree stand. And I'll bet you not even one to two percent of the time do I actually kill an animal. Do I actually come back with the target that I went out there for. But the key is that I have learned to love the hunt. And see, our goal is not only to find your inner hunter, it's for you to learn to love the hunt and to stay in the hunt. So in 2006, in that light, that of knowing that I thought hunting was more about hunting than killing, I decided to try something really out there. My target was to change the world of hunting forever. You hear me? Change the world of hunting forever. That was the target that I was going out to hunt. And in doing so, I decided to create the world's first ever professional hunting league. Except for there was one radical spin. We were to do this non-fatal. And you're like, non-fatal? I mean, how can hunting be non-fatal? <laughs> I've asked myself the same question since a few times. But we went out and we patented a tranquilizer that could be put into an arrowhead so that the animals would not be killed in competition. The theory was that it would have more broad appeal and that we could hunt without the killing. Remember what I said, hunting is more about hunting than it is killing. So in July of 2006, we launched the World Hunting Association. And the story that I'm about to share is a story about hunting through adversity. And so there's a lot of students here. You're gonna try businesses, you're gonna try things in life, in every relationship, every deal, you will meet adversity. It's just the way it works. The key is to love the hunt, right? When you're a hunter, you stay in the hunt and you hunt through that adversity. So I signed hunters from all around the country. I raised a bunch of money. I was ready to take the world by storm. I'm like, yo, I'm about to change the world of hunting forever, and nothing can get in my way. At that time, Vince McMahon, who was the founder of World Wrestling, had taken the WWE public, and he became a billionaire overnight. 
And I'm like, Vince McMahon ain't got nothing on me. Like, I can make this awesome, right? I'm a Jew that hunts. I'm like Ted Nugentberg. <laughs> so I had these killer hunters, well, non-fatal hunters. Everybody signed that was around. I had the great ranch. I had this whole thing ready to rock. And we came in, and we did a big press conference at the Fisher Building right here in Detroit. And we were sure this was going to be huge. Soon, I was on CNN. I was on Bloomberg, I was on Forbes, Cranes, ESPN around the frickin' horn, right? I'm like, dude, hunting is on the map, yo, and I'm gonna make this happen. And I thought, this is awesome. Except for one thing about business, and one thing about life, is that not everything always goes quite the way you hope it will. So that night, I started surfing the web. And as I was surfing the web, I started to look at a bunch of outdoor websites. And no matter what website I found, it just kept getting worse. The headlines were things like, David Farbman and his ego-boosting tour will ruin hunting. Hunting is about killing. It's not about competition. I thought, yeah, you know, I go to deer camp and I'm like, I hope I shoot the smallest deer on the pole. I mean, I thought this made no sense. Like, what's going on? Well, then a boycott starts. Then the hunters actually start dropping off my tour. Then the government tells me that I can't tranquilize deer because it's against the law. Then death threats start. 86 death threats start. I mean, how in the world am I truly worried about safety now, right? So I have no business model. I'm getting married at the time. My wife, she's somewhere out here today. And I was miserable. I was scared out of my mind. Death threats, no business model, my investors had written me off, and I'm a guy that likes to be out in public. You know, I enjoy getting out. I didn't even want to be seen in public. Somehow, I had managed to piss off the NRA and PETA. <laughs> <laughs> Who gets caught in that pickle? I managed to do it. So anyhow, you say, what do you do in a situation like this? Well, I'll tell you what I did. The first thing that I did was I went to my farm up north, and I climbed up into the highest tree stand that I had to where I could get above and get clear. You see, in hunting, it always used to take place on the ground. But over time, we've realized that when you get up into a tree, you gain a sight advantage, you gain a scent advantage, and you can start to relax a little bit. And the same thing's true in business, the same thing's true in relationships. When we're down here, right, when we're down in the ego, we're stuck in our ego. We can't focus on what we want, which is that target, right? That target is to change the world of hunting forever. So I climbed up into that tree with an old Blackberry 8600, slowest internet ever, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm looking through these emails. And as I'm going through these emails, I notice something. There were a few names that didn't seem to fit the rest of these names. So with really slow internet, I'm able to search through and figure out that these were lobbyists. And then I started to say, aha, right? Maybe all of what appears real right now isn't real. Maybe the world's better than what I think it is. Maybe there's a way to fix this situation. And I know a lot of people would freak out when you realize you have lobbyists. And these are not like soft lobbyists. These guys take senatorial candidates and they crush them in a day type lobbyists. And they were not thinking non-fatal with me. No, they wanted to kill me. The subject lines in these emails read things like, we need to STOP capital letters David Farbman, or we need to kill this initiative. I thought, man. This is not great, but now at least I know who these people are. You see, when you're stressed or scared, a lot of the time it's because you don't have clarity on what the targets are that help you get to the big target that you're after. So I got on my phone and I called them up. And I'm thinking they're going to deny this whole thing. <laughs> they didn't deny a thing. In fact, they said, oh, the world hunting thing? We killed it. It's over. There's nothing to discuss. I said, well, do you think I could at least come to Washington, D.C. and tell you what I'm trying to do here? 
They said, sure, you're welcome to come here. There's no reason to, but come on up. So here I am on the airplane between a sneezer and a coffer. It sucked. And I'm sitting here thinking, oh, my God, I've just got to make this happen, right? Somehow, God, help me. I've got to make this work. So what do you think I did? Well, I'll tell you what I did. I freaking got down on my knees, and I begged. I begged for their help. I said, please, God, I made a huge mistake. My career is on the line. I've burned almost every dollar I've raised. Help me through this. I need your help if I'm going to make this work. And it won't happen without that help. And I got real and I got authentic. And one of the things I've learned about getting real and getting authentic is that when you ASK, you have a chance to G-E-T. If you don't ask, you can't get. And that's true in business, it's true in relationships, it's true in everything. And something I've found is that when people are over here or they're over here, if you come right up the middle straight, watch the targets come to you. So now I've gotten real, I've gotten clear, I'm being authentic. So now it's time to start with leverage. I love leverage. So I was able to leverage one lobbyist to the next lobbyist, and then I was able to leverage that lobbyist to get me to the other lobbyist, who then got me to the NRA, who got me to all the groups in the hunting industry, and I went around and had the chance to tell my story. And lo and behold, they all flipped like a politician on a campaign trail. They came to me and they said, there's only one catch. We're going to need a change of format. You're going to have to do this fatal. I thought, oh, it ruins the whole purpose of, of what I was doing. I mean, the whole idea was that hunting is more about hunting than killing. And then I started to think, was it? Or was it more important to me to hit the target that I was after? And I realized I'm willing to make this pivot, and I made it. And this is important for people that are out there when you're doing deals, when you're starting your companies, you're going to have to make pivots sometimes that are uncomfortable. But you do it because you're dedicated to hitting the target that you're after. So we hold our first tournament, right? Think it's gonna be awesome? No, it sucked. It was a disaster. We literally had everything go wrong that you could imagine went wrong on this thing. But we actually got some good footage out of it and we produced some really cool shows. So I took that footage and I went and talked to all the outdoor television stations and then finally I got one hooked and we were on our way to making a deal and they were supposed to call me on Monday to finalize a deal. I already had the term sheet. And then Monday came and it passed. And then Tuesday came and it passed. And I'm thinking, I've already told my investors I was going to make this work. This is not good. Wednesday came, Thursday came, finally Friday. Call comes. It's too controversial. We can't touch it. Oh, I am sick. So I'm home that night, and I get emotional about this. I'm home that night, and I'm sitting on my couch, and I'm talking to my wife. And I'm literally crying, and I sit here and said, I just want to quit. I can go back to real estate, I'll make enough money to be able to repay these investors over the next few years, and I can go back to my life the way it was before, but I don't want to do it anymore. And she looked in my eyes, and she said, you know, your dad's always said the best thing about you is that you'll land on your feet. So land on your feet. Morph this into something, David. You've figured out how to turn horrible enemies into allies. There's an opportunity here. You've got some momentum. And I'll tell you something about momentum in business. You get a little momentum, you bottle it up, and you hold on to that for everything it's worth. And so I, all of a sudden that night, something about those words, something about my wife believing in me in my worst moment, and sometimes when you're hunting through adversity, you'll see it's just about having someone close to you believe in you in those moments, and it pushes you through to continue to hunt through adversity. And I thought that night as I'm walking around, wait a minute, all these websites that tore me apart, all these websites, they're pretty fragmented, and there's really not any advertising on these websites. In fact, mostly all I saw were like dancing birthday cake ads or mate one dating service. And when you went inside the forums or the communities, people were not happy about these ads, and they felt they took away from what the website was supposed to be all about. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, I've been a real estate guy my whole life. I know how to assemble land. 
I know how to put together listings, and I thought, what if I could put together all the advertising opportunities of these different websites and create a big reach for the outdoors? I knew advertisers had told me that was a pain point. They needed a way to reach outdoor enthusiasts. But with my site, World Hunt, they were like, Ugh, it's too controversial and it's just hunting. But if it were hunting and fishing and camping and hiking and ATV and off-road, we'd buy from you. And just like that, I morphed that business. Today that business is Carbon Media Group. Next to ESPN, it's the second largest male audience on the internet. It started as Outside Hub. That's Hubby up there in the blue. We like him. Outside Hub was $5.95 on GoDaddy, and Outdoor Hub was five grand, and we were starting to run out of money, and so we went with Outside Hub. And it's an important lesson, too, when you're starting a business or you're doing something, don't pretend that you know exactly what the user wants. Keep the technology light. Don't need the perfect domain. What you need is to prove a business model. When you prove a business model, anything can happen. Anything can happen. And today it's Action Hub and it's Ag Hub and we have over 600 websites. We put out 4,000 pieces of content per month on the internet. But this did not happen just because I tried hard. No, this happened because I set my targets clear and I got above it, right? I got clear. I got real and I got authentic. I leveraged the opportunities and the people along the way and this helped me hunt through adversity. And so each one of you is going to get one of these sheets, and I want you to think about what are the targets that you're after. What are the targets that if you hit those targets, they would change everything for you? What are the targets you're willing to commit to? Because what I want you to remember is that we are all hunters. The key is to stay in the hunt. Thank you.